share some information with you, and then we will go to Council President Carlson for a few of her words, and then we will open it up for questions. And with that, I'll turn it over to Chief. Thank you for being here tonight. My name is Eric Kirsten. I'm the Rochester Fire Chief. Today, the Rochester Community Development team received a call from a structural engineer that's hired by the Rochester Towers Condominiums who had concerns about structural integrity. Rochester Towers Condominium is located at 207 Fifth Avenue Southwest and it's a 15-story building with 94 apartments, roughly 180, 180 uh, residents. Um, since that time we've been working with the property manager and residents to complete a full proactive evacuation of about 180 residents. Cars are also being removed from the parking ramp uh, out of abundance of caution. Uh, we're, we're setting up a, a zone of 150 feet around the building where we're excluding people, pedestrians, traffic, which means we've got 2nd Street and part of 5th Avenue that's closed to traffic in both directions. Property managers working with all residents to find temporary housing. The Red Cross has opened a temporary shelter at Zumbro Lutheran Church at 624 3rd Avenue Southwest, and it'll be open by 8.30 p.m. Emergency management is, is on standby to assist with temporary shelter through the Red Cross if needed. The safety of all continues to be our top priority. The partnership of the public service agencies is strong and working as trained. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brooke Carlson. I'm the president of Rochester City Council. I want to thank all of our public safety agencies and others who are helping keep our residents safe tonight. As highlighted by Chief Kurska, we ask all individuals to stay away from this area. This helps ensure that our trained professionals and personnel can do their jobs and focus on this important task at hand. The city will continue to provide updates and information as it's available. Thank you and we will take a couple questions. Uh, Chief Kurska and President Carlson, is there any message you want to give to people out there tonight kind of on the heels of what happened in Davenport and now we're seeing this happen in downtown Rochester? What's your message to them? Well, I guess my message is I'm proud that the system's working. This was found in a routine inspection. That's what's supposed to happen. Um, we've got the structural engineers on site, the city structural engineers on site, building safety is on site. Fires, uh, rescue personnel are ready, standing by. The state response team is on standby. I, I feel like the system's working. Um, it detected a, a, a flaw, a, a, some structural problems with this building, and, and we found it before something bad happened. So I feel, I feel really good that the system seems to be working. How significant are these structural issues, do we know at this point, and how great of a risk does this pose to those tenants? Uh, it is significant. This is a serious issue. That's why the tenants are being evacuated. Um, the, our goal by 7.30 p.m. to have every, every resident out of there. There will continue to be professionals, engineers, etc. shoring up the building after 7.30, but we'll have all the residents out by 7.30 p.m., at which time then, then they're safe. But the building is not safe at this time. This is a, this is a threat. And so once the residents are out, the, the owners have contracted with a company to come in to, to shore it up for it to, to the column the, there's a couple of columns that aren't, aren't structurally sound and they're going to use other materials to shore it up and make that building safe we anticipate in 24 to 48 hours that the building will be made safe it doesn't mean it's fixed but the temporary shoring will be in place where we can open up streets and then uh, working with uh, community development, building safety, city engineers, uh, we will determine when it's safe for occupants to re, to re occupy the building, uh, residents, even though there's going to be uh, a period of time where repairs have to be made. And I know you said you were working with the Red Cross to find temporary shelter. Where exactly will that be located? Temporary shelter, I don't have it memorized. The temporary shelter is at Zumbro Luther. 624 3rd Avenue Southwest and it'll be open by 8.30. We don't know how many people are going to take advantage of that. Our, the latest information I have is the owners have been uh, uh, offering motel rooms and they've been helping to coordinate, coordinate that. So I, at this point we don't anticipate a lot of people needing that shelter but we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Chief, 
Chief Kirsko, what road closures are we looking at? I know you said about 24, 48 hours ish, but is a section of 2nd Street going to be locked? 2nd Street Southwest from 4th Avenue to 6th Avenue, and 5th Avenue from Southwest from 3rd Street to 2nd Street. Do you have an exact number of how many people were evacuated from the building and how many residents there are? I don't know. We just got I got a hand I got my hands on the list of occupants two minutes before I came running down driving down here. It's roughly 180. We haven't had time to count them, but we have every name, every phone number of the occupants, and so that puts us in a real, real strong position. And if you know some of them are at work, uh, what have you, or just not in the area, how are you reaching out and contacting them to? Um, we haven't yet. The, the owners have been extremely diligent and forward thinking. Um, real proud of the work they've been doing so far of, of keeping us informed and, and, and being very proactive. They haven't been laying back. They've been actively uh, trying to take care of their, their residents. And I'll just add that we appreciate the media uh, taking this opportunity to get the correct information to share with residents of our community as well who may be um, concerned about this building either because they're residents or have loved ones who need to know what to do. Do we have any idea too of like the demographics of the residents as well? It's not primarily the seniors per se, it's kind of all age ranges. Yeah, I, I don't have the specific. I know there's 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 many different ages in the building. I, I, I'm not able to tell you exactly what the what the breakdown is. How unusual is this type of incident for our area? Um, I'm unaware of in Rochester anything like this in the last 29 years. And there are a lot of other residencies or in a few blocks around the area and a few churches as well. Is there anything that those residents in, that are in the neighborhood around them should be aware of? Yes, uh, follow, don't, don't cross a barricade, don't go through the police tape, uh, keep away from nearly 150 feet keeping people out until the engineers can shore it up and deem it to be safe. And this will also disrupt traffic a bit for the people who live in the other apartment complexes in the area? No, it's, it's going to have minimal impact. Uh, we've got a church that's going to be a major impact to them, um, and a parking ramp and a surface parking lot besides just street traffic. So minimal impact to other presence. The church is the primary impact because it's it's in the collapse zone. And that's Trinity Lutheran next door. What's that? That's Trinity Lutheran, that's right next door. I didn't look at the name, I can't recall, but just southwest of the building. Yeah. How complicated has this been for the fire department police in terms of trying to coordinate and get everybody out by 7.30? Um, actually, it's been quite simple. Police sergeant shows up, I got a battalion chief, they're working hand in glove, they're side by side, city engineers, it's, it's I'm proud of them. Proud of, proud of, we got great people working. Um, just anything else that you really think is important that we know tonight? I'll let, you, I'll let you wrap up, but I just wanted to say that we have plans in place for these types of emergencies for our departments across the city to work together. So I just want people to know that we're prepared for, for challenges like this, and we have our, our departments and leadership ready to work and make sure that our community is safe. Anything further? Anything else you think is important to add? Just, just uh, please stay away. Everybody likes to say, go look at something exciting. There's nothing to see. Um, traffic will be disrupted, and uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of heavy trucks coming in and out for a while to make this building safe. Thank you. All right, thank you. Both. Thank you.